we knew more about Christianity and less about the world and other religions, uh, I imagine if we had a quiz tonight, we could ask you things about the politics of our nation and you all would have some kind of answer for us. But we need to understand that there is a book of answers to all our questions and we need to get to the place to where we study and we get brainwashed by this book. Amen? Amen. Brainwashed concerning God and His Holy Word. Uh, I know I fall short in that. I study, but still probably not where God would have me to be in understanding of His Word. Listen, folks, if we knew if we knew more about Christianity and less about I don't want to name, but other religions. We do know quite a bit about other religions, don't we? I just, I just told you a little bit about Catholicism and what they believe, and that's a shame, folks. It'd be, we'd be so much farther ahead if we knew more about uh, our bodies being a living sacrifice. I see people that have such terrible things in their bodies and maybe it's because of the life that we lived before but we need to get into the Word of God and see about what we are supposed to be as Christians, not as pastors or teachers or evangelists, but as Christians. We are supposed to be living sacrifices according to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We need to learn more about sanctification. We need to learn more about holiness, which in most of the churches you don't even hear mentioned anymore. And I'm not here tonight to knock other churches. I'm just trying to get a point across. We need to learn more about separation from the world. <clears throat> I hear people talking about their entertainment centers, their dance halls, and the different things that they do. The Bible says we're to come out from among them and be separate. Amen? I don't know. Maybe I read a different different uh, Bible than you do, but I see these things and, and it bothers me. Then as your pastor, it bothers me because I feel like maybe I'm not getting God's word across to the people like I'm supposed to. Separation from the world. Separation from the world. We are to be a peculiar people, a Amen. separate people Amen. from the word of God as we study the Word of God and become brainwashed with the Word of God, we need to learn more about forgiving others. God uh, says in no sense praying if you can't forgive others. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. When you stand praying, forgive. Yeah. Amen. More about loving the brethren. More about uh, God's house of prayer. It really bothers me this this is God's house, whether we want to accept that or not. Amen. Amen. Years ago, we walked around the church and prayed and dedicated it all around. Through the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to lifting up the name of Jesus and our Heavenly Father. We need to learn more about the Holy Ghost. We uh, tend to, it seems like to me, tread on the Holy Ghost in the church by neglecting, by not giving Him the place that He should have in the church. I hear people calling the Holy Ghost an it and a thing or whatever, but the Holy Ghost is a person as much as you are a person. Amen. He just does not have a body. Amen. Amen. And you all understand that. Amen. We need to... We need to know about and become brainwashed in understanding of the power that we have over all the power of the enemy. That's so very, very important. Let, let, me, let, let me explain something. In my house at home, I have power over all the power of the enemy. In my house, amen. In this house, I have power over the enemy. I don't have power over the enemy in your house. You have power over the enemy in your house. Do you all understand that? Amen. 
Sometimes we, sometimes uh, we uh, overstep our bounds and we don't understand even what we're talking about. When you come forward and we pray for you here, we take authority over the devils in the mighty name of Jesus. When you walk out that door and you go home, the devil's going to attack you. He's going to attack every fiber of your body. But that's when you stand up and say, wait a minute. It's written. Yes. Amen. I have power over all the power of the enemy and nothing yes. by any Amen. means. Yes. This is my house, devil. I'm telling you, these are Amen. things that we don't, we're not taught. I don't have any power over your house, Marie. That's your house. I don't have any power over your house, Levant. That's your house. But you do. And you don't have any power over my house. Is that right, Pam? That's right. But you have power over your house. And we haven't been taught that. We really haven't been taught that to any great extent here in the church. And we should. We should get back to understanding that if we, if we have any kind of understanding of the Holy Spirit, we understand that he dwells within us. And if he dwells within us, we have his power. And we are supposed to release his power, not your power. His power that dwells within yes. you against the power of the enemy. Yes. You all got that? Yes. It's so important that we understand it. Brother Brown sings that song, I, I'll use my Bible for a road map. Nowadays, we substitute the GPS for the Bible. <laughs> the Bible GPS is the cell phone and Google. Amen? That's true. You say, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't want to offend anybody or have you look down your nose at me. But sometimes pay attention to how many are Googling during a church service rather than reading their good old timey King James Bible or whatever other Bible you have. Amen? Let's, uh, let's look at a few scriptures tonight. Acts and folks, I'm telling you something, my eyes are getting worse and worse and worse. I really have trouble. This is why many times I have Pam or somebody read, uh, because I, I can't, uh, I just can't focus like I used to. Go to Acts, the second chapter. I'm going to just read a few verses here. Acts, the second chapter, and the first verse, you say, Pastor, you use this every service. Well, good, maybe you're getting it down into your spirit. Amen. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Okay? They were all with one accord in one place. Now go to the third chapter in the first verse of Acts. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Peter and John went up together. They were all of one accord in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, second chapter, first verse. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Colossians. Colossians, the third chapter. Am I going too fast for you? Colossians, the third chapter, in the 23rd verse. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as unto the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that the day of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord. Now maybe, maybe you didn't get any connection between these scriptures. But there is a connection, and I'll see if I can put them together tonight. Many, many folks come to church, listen to me, but they don't come to God. That don't make sense, Pastor. Many people come and they sit in the church, but they don't come to God. You with me, Mona? You understand what I'm saying? Many people come to church, but they come for a loaf of bread, or they come for a song, or they come for attention, or they come to show off their new clothes. They come for a million reasons. But when you come through those doors, you're supposed to be coming to God Amen. to Amen. receive something from God or to 
share something that God has done for you. Amen. Amen. Can you all understand? Amen. This is not a rundown honky tonk on the blue side of town. Amen. This is not a this is not a a uh, community center or a club center. This is God's house, folks. Amen. Yes. But the Bible says, don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's right. That's absolutely right. But if you read your word of God from the Old Testament on through the New, you'll find that God respected and God expected his people to respect the place that he gave them to worship him in. That's, that's all that Amen. the building is for, is to <laughs> worship him. It's not for our potlucks. It's not for our pizza parties. These things we do, and God allows us to do, but it, the purpose of the pizza party, the purpose of the fellowship, is to worship Him. Amen. Everything in this house is supposed to be to worship Him. Yes. And I know that too many people come to church, but when they come, they don't come to God. It's Wednesday night. We need to go to church. It's Wednesday night, but it's too cold to go to church. It's Wednesday night, but it's raining. It's Sunday morning, and it's snowing. This is God's house. Yes, amen. And God wants his people to come together and be of one mind and one accord in this place. Okay? Amen, amen. Everything that we say and everything that we do is to bring glory to him amen. and to educate us. Many times we don't know about glorifying God. Many churches, they don't have time for that. They've got too many other things going. They don't have time to worship and praise God. That's what we're here for tonight, folks, is to worship and to praise God Amen. and to bring glory to his name. And I truly believe in my heart you will be blessed where those that stayed home tonight won't be blessed. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Not because I'm here. Whoa, that last one was a good one. <laughs> uh, because you were obedient when the Lord said to you it's time to get ready for Amen. church Amen. Yes. where two or more are gathered together in his name he's there in the midst Amen. of them That's right. now you Amen. may not feel like Christ is here but his Holy Spirit is here yep. wanting to meet you at the point of your need Amen. if you'll surrender to him he will absolutely according to the word of God meet you at the point of your need Amen. I believe right. that. Amen. I, and I want you to know something. I don't get up here and tell you anything to make myself look good because you know many times I say things that ruffle your feathers. But I have to tell you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 i got to bring you what God says. Church should, be, church should be our meeting place where we come together as a body yes. and meet with God. Folks, we don't have to come together to meet with God. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You meet with God when you pray at home. Amen. But he gives us an opportunity as a family of lively stones, if you will, according to the word of God, to come together. Folks, we got listen, you gotta lay aside all this stupid foolishness and begin to come together to praise and worship. Everybody should be here because I'm, I'm, it, it sounds like I'm talking to an individual. I'm not. I'm telling you what God is laying on my heart. If we really forget, forget about praying for God to fill this house. He don't need to fill this house. He needs for us to come together. Yes, and then amen. he'll begin right, to amen. fill the house. Amen. amen. Yes. amen. This is where we come together. and There should be no bitterness. There should be no jealousy. There should be no resentment. There should be no filth of any kind. It should be love and joy and peace yes, in this house of God. This is what it's about. I'm, I'm pretty particular. You all know that about. You come in, I have all the songbooks lined up and, and uh, run the little rug thing because it's God's house. Amen. We need to learn to respect it and love it and Take care of it. It's a place where we're supposed to lay aside the, the weight and the sin that so easily besets us from that joy and that peace and that happiness that is ours. When we come together, 
we should be as excited about seeing Frank and June and, and uh, Shirley, and even though she got all those dogs now, we should be excited about seeing each other. Amen? Like Marie talks about her Christmas. And she gets, she's excited. She's going to see those little monsters that she hasn't seen for a long time. I don't know. Maybe yours aren't like mine. Mine are little. You all got what I'm saying here? When we come in this house, we should come in here. Oh, I'm going to get to be with my brothers and sisters. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. Amen. And rejoice in his friend. Tell them what great right. things he's done for me today. That's what this building is supposed to. And when that happens, when that happens, when we begin to lay aside and put all these other, you'll begin to see God bring people in. Yes. Here's Amen. what the Bible says about you want, you want this church to be full? Jesus said, I'll tell you how to do it. If I be lifted up, I'll draw yes. all Amen. men to me. Amen. Amen. If he's lifted up, he'll do the drawing. Amen. Well, we can put on all kinds of shows and programs and singspirations and dinners and all these things. That's fine. But let's first lift up Jesus. Is that Amen. right, Frank? Lift up Jesus in all that we say and we do, especially when we tell people that we're where do you go to church? Well, I go to the Full Gospel Church. You mean that place down there that's got 10 people and they sing in them old time? That's right. That's right. Amen. But you know what? We love you. We love you even though you think we're phonies. We love you. we got to get the love of Jesus radiating from us. We'll never have anything without it. That's right. I love that song that you sang tonight. And you're not going to believe this, but I was thinking of it before you sang. And it's, it was so appropriate tonight. We need, to, we need to live the love of Jesus. We need to get brainwashed on God's Word. We need to begin to lay aside. I mean, truly lay aside. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how powerful it's got a hold of you. Lay it aside. Yes. Lay it aside. Amen. Amen? Amen. It's our relationship. Oh, my. It's our relationship house of joy, of peace. And happiness. This is our relationship house. Now when we get it in the church, we can carry it home. And the family will begin to see things change. Amen. Amen. If we can't even love one another in there, how can we love anybody at home? Think about it. Many, many come to the house of relationship but have no relationship with the head of the house. I'm not talking about the pastor. Many come into this place right here and have no more relationship with God than the man in the moon. Isn't that a shame? You say, are you judging? No, I'm seeing the fruit on their trees. There you go. Yes, amen. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the relationship house, this house, is not only a house of joy and peace and praise, but again, it's a house of love. It's a house of forgiveness. It's a house of healing. It's a house of deliverance. It's a house of provision. It's a house of prayer. It's a house of repentance. Amen? Amen. It's a house of, or it should be, a house of holiness. Yes. And in many cases, a house of rededication. Amen? Amen. How many of you, don't raise your hand, how many of you, at some time or other, you've sat and listened to a message in this church and rededicated silently. You don't have to get up and jump and shout. Silently in your heart, say, Lord, I rededicate. I fall. Lord, I rededicate. I have to. I have to. I know that some of you have. If you haven't, hopefully this will stir your mind and maybe you next time you come. You know what Jesus said about his house? He says, my house Listen to me. It's his house. Can you all get it? This is what reading the word does for me. I see things I never mind. He didn't say, he didn't say the full gospel house, the Baptist child, the Catholic. He says, my house. Is this God's house or not? Amen. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Yes. Amen. A house of prayer. Not a house of honky-tonk music. Not a house of a bunch of frilly uh, testimony. No, a house of prayer. Prayer. Pr you know what prayer is? Prayer is talking. Prayer is talking to God. If you see me like that, it's because I see things. 
my glasses are so. I see, I see, I see little. I'm sitting there in my chair at home, and I'll see a, a cat or something run across. A, and I get up and look. There's nothing in the house, no bugs, no nothing. But I see these things. Well, I'm. I don't see my eyes. I don't really see them. I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> my house. My house. He's he's emphasizing the house doesn't belong to you. This building don't belong to you or me. This building belongs to God. Yes, amen. My amen. house. Amen. What about your house, Jesus? My house shall be called a house of prayer. And you've made it a den of thieves. Mm hmm. Mm, boy. That doesn't bother me. I don't steal from God. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, where are you at tonight, choir? <laughs> are you stealing from God? Yep. Uh -huh. It's his time. Amen. It's his time. Think about it. It's his house. His choir is sitting empty tonight because somebody is stealing his time. That's right. Amen. Right, Levon? That's hard. That's hard. No, no, no. My house shall be called a house of prayer, and you don't have time to come out. There are, do you know there are countries where the people would give their lives yeah. to be able to walk in freely through the door and praise God and pray. Yes, yeah. mm. Listen, listen, turn to turn to Psalms the 29th. And if you think you got a New Testament, how can you find Psalms? I got it in, I got Psalms in the back of this thing. 29th Psalms. Anybody else in here talk to themselves? <laughs> that one is not lying to <laughs> One thing about it, when you talk to yourself, you usually have an intelligent conversation. <laughs> and you get no arguments. Yeah. Psalms of 20, excuse me, Lord, I digressed here. Psalms, the 20, 29 Psalms, the second verse. Give unto the Lord, look, oh, listen to this, folks, listen to this. Give unto the Lord glory due, yes. glory due unto his name. Give unto the Lord the glory that's due his name. I'm afraid, I'm afraid those that come to the house of God, not to meet God, bring no glory to his name. You and I, here tonight are bringing glory to his name. Amen. Somebody drives by, they say, hey, that full gospel church is open on Wednesday night. Well, they didn't have many. It doesn't matter. It's open. Amen. It's Amen. there. Right. We're bringing glory to his name. Amen. Somebody in here a while ago said that the little white church down on I Avenue next to the Catholic church, it was a Baptist church that it's sold, sold to, you said to the city, is that right? School district. School district, isn't that a shame? My house, they're selling. Think of it, folks, think of it. Amen. And when you say things like, this church is going to close in a year, or this church is going to shut its doors, be careful, it's God's house. It's yeah, God's house. Right, right. As long as Larry Ellsworth is alive and still the pastor, the doors will never close. Mm -hmm. The is still here to help me keep them open. Right. Amen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Amen. This is God's house. This is God's house. Always remember that. Okay. Uh, Psalms 29 2. Give glory unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory. Do you see that one little word when if if we're not it's do him mm -hmm. every ounce of glory and praise that you have is do him yep. why is it do him because he so loved the world that he gave his yes. only begotten yes. son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life because of that one scripture if there was no more in the word of God all glory is do him yes. amen. Because he loved you and me. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so glad tonight. 
Give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord. Don't make him beg it from you. Give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord. Oh, here it is again, that nasty word. <laughs> Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Holiness. Amen. Pastor, that's because you come out of the old whore and holiness organization. No, no, no. That's because that's what God says. Amen. Thus, let me, let me read again. Thus saith the Lord, give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That is thus saith the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's not thus saith Ellsworth. Thus saith the Lord. You got it, Frank? Yes. Thus saith the Lord. How can you argue with it? Well, you can if you come to church, but you don't come to God. You can't come to God and not give glory to his name. I really believe that, folks. Give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory, the glory due unto his name. Give unto the Lord the glory. Do, close the door, brother. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship, worship. Give glory to the Lord, but worship him, worship him in the beauty of holiness. The beauty of of holiness. The word holiness, folks, means sacred place or sacred thing, consecrated, dedicated, hallowed, holy place or thing, holy sanctuary. Amen. This is this is God's holy place. Yes. This Amen. is God's Amen. holy sanctuary. Amen. Wow. If we could ever get that and get it to the place to where the fear of the Lord began to take over again, <clears throat> we would see a dip. Excuse me. We would see a difference in attendance. We would see a difference in the blessings of God being poured out upon us. God's dedicated house is a house of a house of holiness, worship, praise, and holy thanksgiving. That's what God's house is supposed to be. Not a house of evil gossip. It's not a house of jealousy. Not a house of anger and uh, worry and, and uh, bitterness and worldly music and stories and complaints. Mm -hmm. It's a house of thus saith the Lord. Amen. God's house is for whosoever whosoever, not whatever, but whosoever, amen, whosoever will. She corrected me on that. <laughs> whosoever will. Let them come and praise him. Whosoever. Let them come and praise him. I wish we got more whosoever's in here praising God, don't you? Amen. I mean, people that we don't know that just, and it'll happen. As long as we lift up Jesus, he will draw people. And I, I believe things are going to happen, not because, not because of uh, gimmicks. And, no, no, I'm talking about lifting up Jesus. Look at Psalms 150. Psalms 150. Whew. That's the last of the Psalms, okay? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. God should not have to tell us to praise Him, should He? No. You had wonderful testimonies tonight. You're praising God. We should, we should praise God. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary in here. Yes. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the timbrel. Praise Him with the palmistry and the heart. Praise him with the timbrel. Praise uh, and dance. Praise him with oh God, stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Yes, amen. Let everything that hath praise praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath 
Praise the Lord. Let everything that... Do you know what that is saying, folks? Do you? The fly that irritates you has breath, doesn't it? The cockroach has breath. The rattlesnake has breath. Them 50 puppies that were just born have breath. <laughs> And the Bible says, if we don't praise the Lord, the rocks will cry out. That's right. Amen. Let everything that hath breath, especially when you come in the house of God. Amen. We need to worship. We need to worship Him yes. in His presence. Yes. Till we get totally lost in His glory. Yes. I believe that. I believe. The Shekinah glory of God can fill this house till we can't even <clears throat> sing or preach yeah. or stand. I believe that. Yes, amen. Why do you believe? Because I've seen it. It happened in the Old Testament. And they didn't even have Jesus. We've got Jesus. We've got the Holy Ghost. And we got the Father. Yes, amen. amen. Oh, folks, we're missing. Do you realize what we're missing? <coughs> what we're missing? You know, you got a nice house, you got a nice car, you got I got a nice new jacket that my brother gave me. Yeah, we got food. We got all these things. But we don't have the Shekinah glory of God rocking our place here. We don't even we don't even understand what I'm talking about, do we? We're so wrapped up in the things of the world, we need to come out from among them and be separate. Yes. Yes. And we need to become of one mind and one accord in God's house, at yes. least in God's house. Amen. 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 And we need to worship until we forget how we're dressed. We need to, to worship until we forget our pain. We need to worship until we forget ourselves. That's the hard thing to do in it. We need to worship Him totally. We need to worship Jesus totally. We yes. need to worship the Father totally. Listen to Amen. that. Body, soul, and spirit. And folks, I'm telling you tonight, just as sure as I'm standing here, that when this happens, when we become of one mind and one accord in God's house, we're going to see things like we've never seen before. I really do. You believe it? Yes. Amen. You believe it, Frank? Yes. Levon? Yes, I do. Mona? Marie? Shirley? Yes. Al? Yes. You all believe it? Amen. Brown? Amen. Brown. Anderson? Yes. Amen. And when we when we get to the place to where we worship Him, body, soul, and spirit, everything else is just going to fall into place. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. I'm looking, this may be the year, folks. This may be the year that finally we come in one month. Let, let, me, let me just take another second. This might be, I doubt it, I really doubt that it'll happen, but it could happen. This could be the year when the Baptists and the Pentecostals get together. When the Baptists, the Methodists, and the Pentecostals. When the Baptists, the Mes Methodists, the Episcopalian. All the rest of them get together and begin to lift up Him. Yes, amen. Then we're going to see things like we've never dreamed yes. of. This world has not seen true revival, right. folks. It's on its way. Not true revival. But one of these days, there's going to be a revival, and there's going to be the most glorious music. The trumpet of the Lord will sound. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then those of us that are alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet him in the air. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you'll never make it, sweetheart. Right. You must be born again. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and praise him tonight. Can we? Can we? Praise him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lift up the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, for your presence here. We thank you, Father, that... We have power over all the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you tonight, Lord, 
that you're here to meet us at the very point yes. of your need. We thank you tonight, Lord, that you're here with, with your offer of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We thank you tonight, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that's raised against us in judgment we shall condemn. We thank you tonight that even at this very moment, Father, your Holy Spirit is touching bodies and minds and spirits, healing and delivering and setting captives free. We thank you tonight, Lord, for the privilege and the honor to meet in your house, your house of prayer, and worship you and praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 